Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. 32 wins in a row. Last run, uh, started 4 out of 10, finished like 9 out of 10. It was real good. This one I already like. Speed's okay. Rate of fire is amazing. That's the main reason I like it. Damage is fine. Shoop the whoop is a really good choice. And our HP is, uh, it gives us a lot of room. Let's put it that way. We got a lot of time before we expect to find ourselves in a delicate situation. So this is a very good start for us. Let's start by talking about everybody's favorite subject, politics. I'm just joking. <laughs> I will say, though, I... You know, every once in a while, I never tweet about, like, real stuff. I genuinely never do, because I have in the past, and it sucks. You end up spending, you know, way more time than is relevant getting involved in bad faith arguments, or even good faith arguments from people you're never going to see eye to eye with. And, um, you know, that time for me is better served. You know, if it made me happy, that's one thing, but it's better served not making me miserable and at least doing something you know, relevant to other people like playing more Isaac. But anyway, inevitably I get tweets, even if I tweet something that's even like 1 out of 10 controversial, I just end up with people that are like, ugh, please don't talk about politics, I get enough of it from other avenues of my life, without fail. I click on their Twitter profile because I'm petty and I want something to judge them on, and they, they're always willfully retweeting political stuff. It's just that I they disagree with what they've conceived my politics to be as a result of an out-of-context snapshot, and they're trying to shut me down. And you know what? It's working. Okay. Teleport 2.0 is more fun than... Shoop the whoop. But they're both very good. Uh, I don't want to leave... Shoop the whoop behind. But we're probably going to have to. The big thing with this is getting deals with the devil. And I can't remember because we very rarely, unless you're on an Eden run or you get a lucky item room early, which is really what we've done. Um, sure, why not? Uh, very rarely do we find ourselves with Golden Teleporter this early. So we'd like to... Well, let me think about this for a second. I'm going to try something a little bold, because I want more bombs. Okay, we got a lot out of that, so we Ace of Clubs. We did end up getting more bombs. Then the idea is we definitely want to find a secret room. And a second secret room, and then we probably won't get a deal with the devil, but we should get... Uh, an error room. And really, we're just happy to be on this room. If we can't find the second secret room, then the golden teleporter will take us to the second secret room, and theoretically we could buy a battery charge, but it's a little complicated because I would prefer not to um, buy a battery charge because I want a chance to get an arcade on the next floor. Now, amazingly, the plan has kind of worked out pretty much the way that we wanted it to. Wow, that's an insanely good golden chest. Lots of money, little bit of relevant HP, and a luck upgrade. And then Bob's Brain, which really exclusively exists for this. One extra penny. I was gonna say, could be a luck upgrade, make me feel like a fool. Alright. Pin's an easy fight. We've really, I mean, we've done well on this floor. We've laid the groundwork for potentially uh, a lot of future growth on this run. Now, you don't need as much future growth. If you just keep shoop the whoop, because once every two rooms, and maybe eventually once every room, you kill everything. But, uh, I think this is more interesting, so I'm definitely willing to go for it. So, there was a deal with the devil. We picked up Headless Baby, mostly for precedent. And now that we have 12 cents, I am going to go back. I'm going to try to buy a battery charge, because the battery charge should take us to a teleporter. And by a teleporter, I mean an error room. Hmm. I think we should suck up Black Rune. And by suck up Black Rune, I mean suck up Brother Bobby. Which will also suck up the Black Rune. <coughs> Sorry about that. We're lucky. You know, this actually has worked out insanely well. Really, really well equipped for the future here. Headless Baby, you know, it mostly just exists... Yeah, I know. It mostly just exists for us to have, like, uh, 
fodder for sacrificial altar. Now, there was a weird interaction there. Did we... Obviously, we broke the golden heart on purpose. Did we deliver... Did we leave the room quickly enough that not all the coins were able to spawn? No, we, it, all the coins might have been on the same spot because we got a ton of money from that, didn't we? We went from like 12 cents to 7 cents when we bought the... Eh. When we bought the battery charge. Actually, we can't afford to do this because we have store key. Eh, it's not bad. So yeah, we're probably... We probably picked up a bunch of coins that were all standing really close together and it just felt like we only picked up one because of, of the noise. It's the way I'm choosing to think about it right now. Alright, does not seem like we're going to get an arcade. But keep in mind, you know, we got... Uh, we got ulterior motives on this floor. Obviously, we want to go to the shop. Give a stopwatch, which is good. I really think the description for this should say, Oh, let's break it down, but that's not for me to decide. Uh, hmm. This one's going to be a little trickier. The deal with the devil is guaranteed. So if we want the error room, which, you know, sometimes we're going to have to accept it's just not going to be available for us. Um, we're going to have to... Well, let's go right first. Ugh, ugh. And then we definitely want one of these, and Pentagram is fine. And then Mob the Void is beautiful. And then Death's List is okay. Now, start taking these. 48 hour energy is exactly what we want. Balls of Steel, sure. Verp into a Balls of Steel, oh my god. And Amnesia. So this will be Secret Room, Second Secret Room, Error Room. So, well, you know, it could happen in a variety of orders, I guess. But, ah, I remember where we are. It's like upright. Set him down, open up shot. That's not at all. I think all of those words were wrong. <laughs> Set him down, open up shot. You remember that classic uh, DMX song? Well, obsessed fan. Little Baggy. Little Baggy is just horrible. However, our pills have been really good, so maybe Little Baggy is actually pretty solid for us. I don't know. I'm not messing with you when I say that that was, like, some of the best, uh, Mom's Coin Purse action I've ever seen in my entire life. We definitely, we have to break this habit, like, Linkin Park style. Do not pick up battery charges. Battery charges are much better saved until the end of the game. Hello? And by the end of the game, I mean the end of the floor. The end of the floor. That way we can guarantee ourselves access to the error room, which has actually paid out with a bunch of good stuff so far. Hmm, doesn't really matter. We'll take one, though. Oftentimes going to be a secret room. This is a common secret room template. And we'll try something. Oh, we should have put it a little lower. How does that feel, babe? Another classic Austin Powers reference for you. That's what we do on this channel. The saving grace of Death's List is rooms with only one enemy. It's giving me strength right now. So we can go to item room and shop with only one key, but there is our second. You know, now that we have store key, we definitely want to be going to the shop as often as possible. Mostly because battery charges are uh, a big deal for us. Um, we'll probably just do nothing there. And really, even more so than the last run at this point. This run is like almost unfathomable to die on. I could teleport out and save HP, but not necessary. I don't even think we need to look for a second secret room. So we're... Whoa, what a strange room. I'm happy with shop key, honestly, but... I kind of like the idea of a room that gives you five trinkets, even if they're five middling trinkets. You know, it's a chance for uh, for you to refactor your run if you so choose. Middling trinkets are often situational anyway. Not necessarily just, like, in the middle, like Jimmy Eat World, but... Uh, you know. If, depending on the conditions of your run, they can help you out. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there because I was busy thinking about, like, what if you made a... Where is... Oh, there it is. What if you made, like, a... 
a 2000s era pop punk chiptune cover band called Bimmy Eat World. I'm not going to explain the reference. You can ask your parents or look it up for yourselves if you're interested. Alright, so we got Leviathan already. Um, but no error room access yet. What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about no error room? I think we might not have an option. Uh, the one... Th Ugh, please. Please! What a curse. The one thing I can think of is there's there's no reroll re machine in here, right? Oh, there is a reroll machine in here. Okay, we'll give you a little juice then. Saving our bombs for secret room potential. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it took like seven cents. That's ridiculous. There we go. Our battery charge. Now we get... Oh my god, and it's a great one. We got an error room. So we get... Death's Touch for certain, and we might as well take Magic Scab. I bought a bomb, and I bought an Emperor card as well. I'm very happy with both of them, to be honest with you. This is a classic run. We're looking strong and going to like 33 here, which is the age that I will be when this episode goes up. That's a joke because I'm 29 right now. Dude, we have six luck and Gimpy. Should have grabbed that key, obviously, but... Life goes on. Um, yeah, we'll take Binky. And this is, like, unironically one of the strongest runs we've had in a long time. It's markedly better than our last run, which was, like, Epic Fetus. Um, I always forget. Abaddon, that's... I keep wanting to say Apollyon. At some point, you know, and y you might look at this and say... You know, it's it's a, a brain worm or something like that. I've learned so many new words that I had no connection to whatsoever before Isaac. And I think my brain is just like, you know what? Every letter gets one new word. And if you're adding... That was dumb, but... If you're adding more beyond that, I'm sorry. There's just no space anymore. So, A gets Apollyon, okay? B gets Belial. C gets Clintumnestra. That's not in the game yet, but I've been listening to a lot of Destroyer lately. A reference for all you all you intellectuals out there um well you know what we're gonna do here dude this is why I, i'm really vindicated and i'm gonna avoid singing songs from spider-man 2 here because i was slightly slightly too old to be embarrassingly into uh dashboard confessional at the time that spider-man 2 released i was 16 and i was listening to cool bands like destroyer for example and uh but i will say you know spider-man 2 came out in 2004 Spider-Man 1 came out in 2002. In 2002, I was embarrassingly into Hero by Chad Kroger featuring Josie Scott. I thought it might have been the uh, the best song ever created. I w and this is not a joke. I went and I saw... I mean, it's a joke in that it's funny, but it, it, was, it was also sincere at the time. Um, I went and saw Spider-Man 1. And I still think that movie is pretty good even though it's a relic of an earlier age. But when I saw the movie, I was like, when are they gonna play the friggin' song? Like when Spider-Man's swinging for the first time, it should be, only a hero can save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait. Instead, they saved it for the credits. A marked showing of restraint for a movie about a man in a spandex suit. But regardless, a lot of growth happens in those two years for people, you know, between the age of uh, 14 and the age of 16. When I was 14, Spider-Man 1 was one of my favorite movies of all time. When I was 16, it was like eight and a half the sun. adaptation. And there's always like, I hope people can relate to this and they don't take it as mocking. But whenever, you know, there, there's like an intellectual, or an aspiring intellectual, and I say intellectual as if it's a four-letter, like a slur, basically. But, um, and I am self-aware referring to myself as it as well. But, um, there's always something like, you know, it, it takes a while when you're finding yourself to figure out, like, what you actually like. So, it starts out with you knowing that some things are respected. Yeah, let's do it. And then you watch it and you go, okay, I like this. 
and then you don't really have the the backup criteria for why you like it. You know, you're, you're just like, it's well respected, so I'm a big fan. So you always end up with this thing, you'll talk to like a 15 or 16 year old who's, who's really, you know, working on themselves. For me, it was Garden State, you know, it was like, uh, do I love The Graduate? I think The Graduate's one of the best movies of all time. 2001 A Space Odyssey, Annie Hall, and then Garden State. I think that's up there, dude. I think Garden State's right up there with them. There's always going to be like, if you ask them their favorite movies of all time. I didn't even use... Wait, didn't I? I might not have used Golden Teleporter on the last floor. That would have been dumb. I got it too wrapped up in my own conversation here. Because I'm such an intellectual, as you can see. It'll always be like... And this is at the risk of insulting Zach Braff, who seems like an affable young man. Um... You know, a few canonized classics that are inarguable, and then recent movie that's pretentious and is aping those movies, but doesn't nearly aspire to the same highs. At least that's what it was like for me. And I mean, you know, there's no love lost for Garden State. What is, does that expression mean, no love lost? I thought it was like a backhanded way of saying, like, you don't like something, but that's not really how I meant it. It's like, you know, I... It was well-liked, sincerely, at the time that it came out. It might still be well-liked now. But watching it in 2018, you, you definitely can't shake the feeling that it's part from this this weird uh, era of, like, mope core that we're not really... It's, it's not in vogue anymore. You know, back then, it was just around the time when, like... Indie became a mainstream term, as ironic as it sounds. So for there to be a a man who listened to the shins in a movie, it was like, oh my god. That's something I you know, I can't I can't even fathom that this independent band is having their songs in a movie. Like it was it was a watershed moment, right? And now you kinda look back at it and you're like, ah But it, it served its purpose I mean, for a time and a place absolutely plus you know you want a little piece of trivia for uh, garden state that you can impress your friends with produced and partly financed by one daniel devito it's true look it up i know because i was reading all the zines back in 2004 dude the unlocks are out of control so is the money like we're generating a just an absurd amount of money Okay, so this floor, we have chaos. Oh. I don't need the hero font. Give me a 13th key. Probably unnecessary. Um, don't forget to use golden teleporter here. This is insane. Alright, so if I'm correct, well... I thought we had... Didn't we have the pills? How are we able to get runes? Did we, we did pick up starter deck after that. Okay, so things are all... Dude, again, I, I haven't been focusing on the run, basically, at all. We should be good to go Devil Room. Error Room. If we get a deal with the Devil, it's going to make it easier. But there must be... Yeah, there's like 100 battery charges. We got to deal with the Devil anyway. So we'll take... Guppy's Tail. Reroll. Ansu's. Does not matter whatsoever. Not literally, we cannot be stopped. Nothing can stop us on this run. The only reason we're at all going even mildly slowly is because of the fact that uh, we're taking so much time just to make sure that we're able to actually go to the the error room on almost every single floor. So in the end, I do think we look. Uh, Genius is maybe, you know, it's not the word that I would use. I reserve that for Zach Braff in uh, Garden State, obviously. But if you want to use it, I can't stop you, I suppose. So check this out. I don't think I screwed it up. We're going to Emperor. We're going to fight Mom. We're going to fight one wave of boss rush. As long as you don't accidentally walk into that. Um, yeah, we want this. I know you're going to say maybe Void works here. And maybe it does, but... Maybe it doesn't. You ever think about that? Really a 50-50 chance when you put it in those terms. 
Now take me out. And we're good to go. So we got a free rune bag. We did not get our deal with the devil, is that correct? Ancient recall, was that using five cards? We're getting so many unlocks, it's like out of control. Anyway, I just think it's interesting, you know, how you're... For most people, their tastes change as they get older, but they also kind of crystallize. You know, I, I, my tastes have changed as I've gotten older. Like from 20 to 30, or 19 to 29, if you want to get technical. Um, my tastes have changed, but they haven't changed much. You know, stuff that I liked... I don't think we can actually get value out of it, to be honest, but stuff that I liked when I was, like, 18, I tend to still like, for the most part. Stuff that I liked when I was 12, I do not like at all anymore. Except for things that are, like, demonstrably good, like Garden State, for example. Um, no thank you, sir. But, you know, I, I think, in general, you know, people, uh, at least from a media standpoint, they figure out what they like, you know, in their late teen... Oh, I guess it's greed. <laughs> they figure out what they like in, like, their late teenage, early 20s or something like that. And then they pretty much just ride it. Or maybe they I don't know, I might be projecting. You know, I, I do listen to... New music. But very, very rarely. A lot of, like, you know, I've been going out on these longer bike rides, a couple of hours, and I'm like, okay, I gotta queue up, like, two or three albums. Or if you're listening to Guided by Voices, I gotta queue up the whole friggin' discography, but... Um, I'm going out, I'm like, okay, which album that I haven't heard since, uh, the year 2008 should I listen to today? Okay, Hot Chips One Life Stand? Sure! And I'm like, the music has never been the same as it was in 2009, man. And it's embarrassing. <laughs> for me, not for the industry. The zeitgeist. Uh, Alright. Well, we are... Speaking of embarrassing, we're like... Embarrassed with riches here. No thank you. Uh, well, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, it, it literally doesn't matter because we're not gonna get any more shops anyway. Except for maybe one on the hush floor. And it also, like... Oh, double algae, absolutely. Functionally does not matter. Because we're gonna win this run very, very easily regardless, so... Um, yes, we've already fought you. We will void out into a deal with the devil. Oh, that kinda sucks, actually. My mistake. Teleport me? Nope. So I think we're not gonna be able to get an error room here then, because we're already stuck. Alright, so be it. Well, it feels good, you know, you gotta take these easy wins when they come. Because they're definitely, I mean, even the last run, you know, a, a loss in Isaac is just a win that was not able to mature. It's, I, I truly believe, especially if you lose early, which is, in my opinion, at least, my experience, I should say. Um, even though functionally the sentences mean pretty much the same thing. If you say, in my opinion, it makes you seem un unlearned. If you say, uh, in my opinion, it makes you seem like an expert. Um, so in my experience... Most Isaac runs that lose... ...tend to lose early rather than late. Now, there are exceptions to that. It's not a rule, it's just a... ...a trend, I think. You know... The longer a run goes on, the more opportunities you have to, you know, twist the game's parameters to your will. Which is pretty much where we're at right now, where uh, nothing can stop us. But early on, you know, you start an Eden run, you get trash stats, a couple of trash item rooms, difficult enemies, and uh, things, are, uh, things are dangerous. For us, we're not in that mindset right now. You know, we're... We got 20 damage. We're at the rate of fire cap. We got lots of ability to generate uh, extra value. It's an easy one. And I will only rarely apologize for that. <laughs> only when we've had a few in a row. Or if we've had a few. Now. Can't pick it up. That's alright. We're at 99 cents. Um, this is where, I, if I was more of a, of a 
old school hip hop enthusiast, I would insert a Macklemore reference. If you find yourself guffawing or being taken aback at me calling Macklemore's thrift shop old school hip hop, congratulations, buddy, you just got trolled by the best of them. I deliberately said something I don't agree with to elicit a reaction that makes me feel intellectually superior. How do you feel about that? Probably not too smart, huh? Now, NL, did you just take a guppy transformation instead of dad's key? Yes, I chose to take a guppy transformation and be transformed into the all-seeing cat for the 2500th time instead of uh, taking dad's key and going to fight Mega Satan for the 931st time. Now that I've couched my decision in uh, absurdity that reflects the real-life situation we're dealing with here, can you understand my perspective? Being guppy. I'm not gonna say we've earned it, but you know. You know what pairs nicely with a with a wonderful one run? A little bit of guppy potential. You guys think that and this is not me trying to expose a global conspiracy. Do you guys think that certain wines pair better with certain foods for real? Or do you think that it's all a conspiracy to sell wine. <laughs> it's all level with you. Kate and I, you know, for special occasions, we'll go out to some pretty fancy places. And we live in a, a city with really, really good restaurants. So sometimes, you know, the, the bill can rack up there. And um, people at these places treat us as if we know what we're doing when it comes to wine. We have absolutely no idea whatsoever. Uh, more or less. So they, they tell us, the, oh, well, the... Chardonnay pairs quite nicely with the fish appetizer. And we're like, oh, that sounds good. I'll have that. Um, but I'm like, does it? Or or do you just want to sell me some Chardonnay? You know, in the media, we have ombudsmen. Ombuds people. And, uh, you know, other protections that protect the consumer from conflicts of interest. And if you don't believe that... Maybe spend a little less time on Twitter, but, you know, keep your skeptical head around you. It's not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, necessarily. Um, but when you're in a rest, they need a restaurant ombudsman. This is a terrible joke that would go so well in the New Yorker. It's the restaurant ombudsman that vets restaurants and audits them to determine, does it actually pair well, or is this is this a sponsored menu item? So normally I would not fight Hush here, but because we got the Chaos card... That's my favorite way to fight Hush, is to get all the rewards without having to fight him at all. Mmm, not amazing. Uh, not amazing. I, we tend to get so many bomb-related items down here. I don't know what, what's up with that. Maybe it's just because we've gotten a lot of items to begin with, thanks to... Uh, all the error rooms, but I don't know, that seems a little... I would be surprised, I guess, is what I'm getting across there. It's not like we've d 4 ourselves a hundred times. Can't hit what you can't see. Probably, you know, triple shot is debatably the wrong choice. It might actually be objectively the wrong choice from a mechanical standpoint, but... Alright, up to the cathedral. We've done our due diligence on this run. We've had a fun time regardless. We had, uh, like, our anniversary was this past Tuesday. We went to uh, a, a restaurant in Vancouver I've never been to, but it's been around for 100 years. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called McDonald's. No, it's, uh, I'm not going to tell you what it's called, because honestly, it's none of your business for the purposes of this anecdote, but uh, it had some food I'd never had before in my entire life. Frog's legs? The way we handle food, and I'll speak for myself because I don't want to offend anybody. The way we handle food in North America is so strange. Because I always grew up, you know, and, and frog's legs were like a joke. It was like the most exotic food you could ever imagine. Like if someone was eating frog's legs, what is what image does that conjure in your head if you're North American? It's like, uh, definitely someone from France. I'm just calling it. It's, it is French cuisine. And then, like, they're, they're open-minded, you know? Because they're, they're eating an animal that has slime on it. Yeah, it gets processed by the butcher and etc., etc. But 
Don't, are you crazy? That animal is ugly in real life. You're eating an ugly animal. I ate it? It's like the least exotic food you could ever imagine, except for the fact that it comes from a frog. It tastes just like... It, it's a cliche, but it tastes a lot like chicken. What, like, why are we... I feel bad, you know, there's probably somebody over here trying to make, like... I think we do want Ansu's. Trying to make, like, a frog meat operation work. I don't know, you, you need, like, a hundred frogs to make a frog steak, I'm sure, but... Um, and people are just like, oh, sorry, I don't like foreign food. I'm like, what are you talking about? What? This is weird. Um, so, if you ever get the opportunity... Eat some frog's legs, if you think they're exotic. They're not exotic. I'm gonna be honest, I also, for dinner, I had a duck breast. Because whenever I'm out here and I'm paying far too much for a meal, I'm like, I'm gonna get something I ain't never seen before. Kate got a steak, the steak was delicious. I got the duck breast, the duck breast was okay. But it's, it's my own fault, you know? I ate duck, or I've eaten duck a, a few times in the past in like a an haute cuisine format. I've never really liked it, but I always think like the next time I have it, I'm gonna love it. And then I have it and I'm like, ah, I should have gotten the steak. I should have gotten the frog steak. My mistake. Anyway. No, I know I just don't like fighting delirium. Get off my back, mom. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did click the like button, it helps a great deal. Of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.